Shelly Aronoff is the CEO of Interplan, taking time out of a busy schedule, without a doubt, to join us for a one-on-one -on -one interview here on the trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange to talk all about Interplan's pioneering seed technology. Thanks a lot for joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you. Let's start with an introduction, not just to the company, but really your core product, your core work uh, that you do at Interplan. Sure. So at Interplan, we engineer crops to signal when they're stressed specifically by important stresses to farmers like fungal pressure or insects or if they don't have enough nitrogen and the idea is by the time you actually find a problem today it's already too late the damage happened we need to turn back the clock and find it very early so we tap into the plant's molecular reaction to the stress which starts within hours and then we teach it how to signal optically when it's attacked so the idea is plants are living their life growing but when they're infected by fungus, we get an optical signal that we can see anywhere from space down to equipment. And um, it comes weeks before the damage happens and the symptoms show up. So you have actual time to treat the plants and increase yields. I, I love talking with, in the world of Wall Street, entrepreneurs and business founders about their own personal journey. What, what was your personal journey that led you to the work with Interplan? This is my third company, so I think that's probably what I was meant to do in sure. life. Um, I went to Stanford Business School, it's what brought me to the U.S. Um, but my previous company, my second one, it was a small business. It was a hummus brand, growing slowly, selling in supermarkets in the West Coast. And it was my moment, four and a half years into it, I thought, this is not for me. I don't want to build something small, I want to do something really impactful and big. And that was the beginning of Interplan. So starting this company was really all about scale and impact. How does your seed tech allow farmers to see, sort of visualize stress within their crops? We do the vi visualization for them in a sense. You don't have to go out and scout or anything like that because farming of soy and corn in the U.S., we're talking hundreds of millions of acres, quite a lot of crop. So the way it works is you just plant the seeds and then when the signal is there, we can collect it from satellites, we can collect it from the equipment that goes through the field, through drones. That then is provided to the farmers either through text messages or through their operating systems that they use, like the John Deere operating system. They can then see it on their fields. So they know these are the fields that are impacted with fungal pressure. This is where I should go and apply fungicides. And then at the same time, these are the fields that are healthy and those could be left alone. Where are the main fields that you and your customer base are, are located? Are they largely throughout the United States? It's the Midwest, uh, the land of soy and corn, specifically for this year. This was our first commercial year in 2025, and we started with Nebraska, Illinois, and Iowa. And then 26, we're going to scale up in those uh, states, and then we're going north as well into 27. So just throughout the Midwest. Yeah, of course. Um, how do you go about determining where those next places are? I'm sure there's a fair bit of, uh, you know, not just establishing yeah. relationships at the community level, but I'd imagine you're leveraging a lot of technology to better determine where to bring your own tech. It's a combination of where there's a lot of acres of soy and corn, where there's a lot of fungal pressure, where there's diseases that could be treated, just wherever it's top of mind and yield impact can be created. And then you're right, there's also the relationship. So we, we sell through channel, through the retail channel, not direct to farmers. Mm -hmm. Those happen to be networks of stores. So when we get close to a company, we tend to try to scale with them as well. Uh, I know that Interplant has made the world's first real-time detection yeah. of fungal infection <laughs> in soybeans. What does this pivotal moment mean for you and what should people know about it? Right, so this year, since it was our first commercial year, was also the first time ever in the history of farming where farmers were alerted as soon as a plant was infected with uh, fungus. And it happened actually in uh, July 19th in Nebraska where we saw a signal for white mold and we were able to tell our farmers, which gave them a few weeks in order to take care of the problem and go out and apply fungicides that could treat white mold. By mid-August is when the symptoms show up and we know that we had about a three and a half week head start on that disease. And when you see the symptoms, it's already too late. So this is kind of the beauty. You can actually go out and treat it and then prevent that yield loss. What was the technology that you were using to identify it as early as possible? And what was the actual mechanism by which the farmers themselves can, the be, can be notified? Are they, I'm, I'm not yeah, even yeah, yeah. asking as a joke, are they like pop-up notifications on the phone? Are they phone calls? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the low-end uh, part of the technology, right? But yeah, so the technology to detect is our sensors, our plants, that we plant in plots right now in order to tell us 
uh, if there's an infection in an area. So you can think about it as plots that represent a cell network coverage. And then from those, we scan them and we look for the fluorescence signal. We add to that additional sources of information. So what's the weather patterns? We have scouting on the ground. We have molecular uh, pathology assays that we've developed. And then we take all that information and we send out reports to farmers and text messages. And the reason is farmers really just prefer getting text messages versus one more piece of software or one more app. So literally they got a message saying there is a fungal infection in your area, it's white mold, you should talk to your agronomist and figure out an action plan to protect your crop. Wow, that's incredible. What are some of the biggest ag challenges that you feel Interplant is uniquely situated to address, to help solve? Absolutely. I mean, I call it the invisible stresses. So we've been at warfare with weeds for a very long time, and I think the reason is you can see them, so everyone treats them. But fungus, insects, nutrient deficiencies, you cannot see them. So the reality is farmers do nothing about them, or you have two options today. Either you don't treat anything and you take the yield damage at the end of the season, which is about 60% of uh, acres in the U.S., and then 40% just apply prophylactically fungicides without knowing if there's a disease, because you just can't know. That's where we come in. The idea is treat all the acres that need treatment at the right time and then leave the healthy acres alone. What has the feedback been from the farmers themselves so far? Yeah, that's been the best part. They're yeah. really excited. Our, yeah. We went into the season and everyone told us farmers, it takes them a long time to depend on the new technology. And we're wondering how long before they actually rely on us for information. But we, I think we stepped into such a gap of information that even on year one, they were calling up and asking, what are you seeing? I'm trying to make my decisions. Should I spray? Uh, we had farmers that got the alerts. They were super happy. They decided to spray more fields than they did previously. We had farmers that were going to spray, but we told that they have healthy fields. That was a whole other conversation. So it's been pretty interesting for year one just to see this is solving a real pain point. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Finally, is there a bit of tech that you rely on that has surprised you? Or a part of the process that maybe you weren't expecting to be so important in terms of the deliverables for the farmers themselves um, with your own journey with the company as it's continued to grow and evolve? I think one of the learnings from the season that really excites me, uh, so we're generating a fluorescent signal when we see stress, right, from fungal pressure. What we didn't know going into the season is that different fungus creates different fluorescent signature. So we're already after year one seeing enough of a pattern and we're building machine learning models to say, oh, this is frog eye or this is uh, bacterial blight or whatever the disease is. And then we're able to use the fluorescence to indicate not just that there's fungal pressure, but what the disease is specifically. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. We'd love to get out there and see it, and see it in action ourselves. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations on the success. Best, best of luck to continue to scale to those other states throughout the Midwest for 2026 and beyond. Shelly Aronoff, CEO of Interplant, joined us here at the New York Stock Exchange. Shelly, thank you so much. Thank you.